Will she even start without exploding? Disclaimer, this is not going to be a reselling video again. I don't think they will be until I get this van project done. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, grandmas. Today is Monday, Labor Day, I think. And to celebrate Labor Day, we're gonna do some labor on the van. Also my friend Anthony's birthday, so happy birthday, Anthony. We are on our way to a hardware store to look for a bolt. I kind of took it easy yesterday. As soon as I got home, I just cleaned the garage up a little bit, organized my tools, edited the video. Yesterday definitely was the most frustrating day. I've realized that I have incredible patience. I don't know where I got it from. Both of my brothers, Martin and Nate, have awful patience. They start swearing and punching and throwing stuff if nothing works their way. I do not. I just, I have a different type of patience. I don't know where I got it from. My mom gets frustrated with things too. Generally, she's a pretty patient person. All right, wish me luck. I've been recommended to this Ace Hardware that they're supposed to have an amazing hardware selection. They're a Yeti dealer. This place has to be legit, right? Come on, bolts. Drink, is it? I'll be so happy if this is it. It does need to have, it's on a pulley, so it does need to have the uh, flange. Yeah. That's what that's called, a flange? Yeah. Okay, so that's called a flange, didn't know that. That was by far the most useful, helpful place I've been to on this journey. I learned about steel hardness, and this is a 10, I think it's 10.8 steel hardness, which is a eight in standard, and then in metric, it's a 10.8. And a flange bolt means that it's this bolt head already has like a washer kind of welded onto it. That means it's a flange and it has a smooth space on it. I found something that is exactly the same. It's the same threads, the same smoothness distance, but it is too long. That is the closest that they had. So I'm going to cut the bolt to size, measure it and cut it to size and then and only then will this bolt work. Maybe I'll just put it in and see if there's extra threading in the block. I'll uh, screw it in slowly. And then if I have to cut the bolt, I'll cut the bolt. But this is the closest thing I've found so far. Thank you very much, Ace Hardware. No, it's going crazy. Check hybrid system, get to vehicle to a safe place immediately. What the heck? No. I need to get to a safe place immediately. I've never seen this before. Just when I'm on my way home from getting the bolt, now this car doesn't work. It very well could be the battery pack. I hope to God it's not the battery pack. Maybe it's just the uh, auxiliary battery because that's about time to go. Um, but I'm not having problems with the electronics. Like, electronics work fine. It just says check hybrid stiff system, stop the vehicle in a safe place immediately. I'm still like four miles from home, so this is not good. I'm gonna try to inch my way home. I have like no power. I'm so glad this did not happen yesterday on my mom and grandma's way to and from Tampa, because this is absolutely awful. I have like no power. All right, I'm able to inch home at like 22 miles an hour. I got my hazards on. I got a thing to run the OBD code at home. I really hope that the battery pack is not fried on this thing because that will be a whole nother issue of worms that we have to deal with. <laughs> day after day after day. Maybe I just gotta get the van fixed today and that's the vehicle me and my mom are gonna have to use. I don't think it's the battery pack because I am like still hyper miling at 57 at the check engine light. It's like I touched this car, so I broke it. So between me and my mom, we have a scooter. And I feel like normal now. I feel like it's a normal drive. It was giving me like power issues and like almost stalled out earlier, but now it feels okay. But it still has the, the air on it. But I am almost home, so I'm gonna run the code and see what happens. So I got this little code reader off of Amazon for very cheap, and it actually looks awesome. That screen is sweet. It's the first time I've used it. It says waiting for vehicle to respond. I wonder if I have to turn it on. Oh, verify that the ignition is on. Okay, there we go. 7EA engine, 7EA. So it's a P3190 engine code. So back to my new bolt. It is too long. I wanted to screw it in just to see if it will still just go in all the way, but it stops about right there. I gotta get about a centimeter off of it. My new bolt in a vise, I measured up. I gotta cut about that much off of it. 
I got my hacksaw and this is going to be very patient. Cut. About 20 minutes of progress, a little under halfway through the bolt. My hacksaw blade is getting chewed up. The saw blade is getting chewed up. Teeth are falling off. Success! And we got a new bolt. Custom made. It is beautiful. Ideally, I should have also bought a bolt that matches this so I could screw the bolt on and then after cutting it, screw the bolt off to clean up the threads just a little bit on the end. Because right now, even though it's cut well, the threads on the end are a little bit chewed up and it's not going in to the engine. Uh, cleaned up the threads by hand just using some basic hand tools. And now it does thread onto the block. I don't want to torque it onto the block very hard, just tightening it in by hand just to make sure everything works. And I think we have our bolt now. I think I'm gonna hit it from the bottom just so I can line that up. What the heck, which way did it go? Because that pulley came off, that hydraulic plunger plunged out all the way, creating way too much tension on the belt to get that pulley back in. So now I gotta take off this mechanism over here to get some slack in the belt. Had to take off the timing belt. I could not get that pulley on without loosening up uh, the tension and uh, rerouting everything. And whenever you do that, those rear sprockets, they spin and they get out of time again. But I know how to do it now that my, I know my tooth count is one off. So this should be no problem. And when retiming these sprockets, I find it a lot easier just to use a 17 millimeter crescent wrench rather than a socket, just because you get more control over where you're positioning it. And I'm gonna really try to show y'all what I'm doing here. Uh, this, cause this was the most frustrating part for me. So my timing, uh, my timing's off a little bit cause it just spins and I'm bleeding cause I was wrenching on something. I need to line this tick up that I made with and feel the springs the valve i think those are valve springs and align my tick up one one tooth one tooth before one tooth before my mark uh, i have a very very slight mark at where it needs to be my marks right here and I need to go one before it because I, I counted a tooth off when I did it. And uh, that, puts the, that puts that camshaft in time. I gotta clip it down. That's another difficult part. If you have it perfect, it'll kind of float there, but it's better to clip it down. And you wanna be very careful with this because when it springs, it springs with force. And that force could take off a finger. There, and it just sprung. Re-rotate. Rerotate that. All right, so that one's now in time. Uh, now I gotta do the really far back one there. That's not that easy to do either. Get it on the, get it on that crank, and then I have to uh, retime it based on the blue marks and then the marks that I've made. And while I'm doing that, I'm resetting this hydraulic tensioner. I'm uh, cranking it like a half of a turn every couple of minutes because you have to push that oil back in slowly. Uh, I don't even know if I'm doing this correctly. I did it to the old one because I knew I might have to do this, but I'd like to use the new one if possible because this one has already, I don't know, been used for a while. Put in my grenade pin. I already did it to the old one. I used a little tiny drill bit to do it, but I still think that using the new part repressed is better than using the old part repressed. So we're gonna go with the new part. All right, got the new one reset. From what I've read, you want to be very careful with not doing that too fast. You want to do it slow. I think air like bleeds out of it and goes somewhere. So be aware of that. Maybe do some more research on it. But we're going to reinstall that where it goes. You want to get all these pulleys back in before you even mess with that rear one. And uh, I can see my blue mark is over rotated. So I'm going to kick it counterclockwise. And I have a mark that I made before I took the old belt off, spin that cog and slip the belt where it needs to be. I can kind of tell that's where it needs to be just by the way that the tension comes off of the wrench. It's really hard to explain, but there's like this area that it like floats in and I'm gonna go up to check the timing and to throw a clip on that sucker. Easier to clamp that sucker from the bottom too. 
This is where we check our marks on the rear, check our marks on the front. The front should be fine. The fronts are easy. The fronts are real easy. Those are good. I feel like I did all of this yesterday, just having to do it all over again due to that busted bolt here. But I know what I'm doing now. It's like I basically, it's like I've changed three timing belts on this car. Get ready to pull the pin and turn her over. All right, and to look at that rear, I have a blue tick on the front and I look directly back and I can see that it's in time with that metal protrusion. That is the timing on that rear sprocket. The front rear is a little bit harder to see, but I know I got that one in time because I used my little straw method. Straw method is taking a piece of plastic, lining it up with the blue, pushing it back, and then seeing if you hit the timing mark. And it's really hard to do with a camera in your hand, but you can do it with a light. I adjusted this manual tensioner just to take a little bit more of the tension out of it. Uh, we're going to take off our clips, turn it over, and see if we're still timed up, lined up again. Getting this little smiley bearing is one of the more difficult things. I put in the old tensioner because I pulled it and it like immediately plunged and I didn't like that. Um, but putting the pliers in there, twisting it counterclockwise while tightening that 14 millimeter bolt up top. Not that easy, but that's what we got going on right there. I got manual tension on it. I have not pulled the plug on that yet. I'm gonna take off my clips and turn it over a couple times. Make sure that we're all still in time. Thanks to Mario's tip, spark plugs are still out there and I'm gonna crank it over. Turned it over twice, everything seems to be aligned. Pulled the pin, waiting uh, five or 10 minutes for that hydraulic tensioner to compress, depress to expand. Be mindful, those ticks are not going to line up anymore because we've been turning the engine over. So don't be alarmed with that. And the specs on that is 3.8 to 4.5 millimeters. How you measure that, I could use one of these tools. Easiest way I found out to see if that's in spec is to find something that fits the length of that plunger right there. And that zip tie pretty much fits in there snug. So I'd say, that's a good estimate of the length of that plunger. Then I take a caliper here. I got this off of eBay or Amazon, I can't remember. And uh, read the measurement on that. The top is in millimeters. I'm at four millimeters there. So that is within spec. On to the next step of reassembly. All right, so we're reinstalling the engine mount bracket. Just spoke with Mario. He said to fire it up and see if it even runs. So I'm gonna reinstall the spark plugs get all my connectors back up back together make sure nothing is in the rotation way of the uh of the belt and then i'm going to add some distilled water make sure that's good to go and then we're going to fire it up see if it runs it's a slow filling process think i'm full of distilled water spark plugs are reinstalled all the wires are plugged back in and I uh, bungee handed it out of the way. Everything is free and clear from the timing belt path. The motor mount is back on, but it's not torqued down yet. Everything, is clear. Everything down here is clear. Clear, clear, clear. Crank bolt's still in, but we're going to turn her over. See if she starts. Oh yeah. And battery is re crank her up. Double check, make sure everything is out of the way. This one kind of scares me. It kind of just hangs there. What one? The wires. Is that gonna be in the way? Maybe. It's idling good. It's operating so smoothly. Everything is in time. The turtle's in time. My crank. My crank's down here spinning. It's got a new crank sensor. It's all very, very happy. Installing the motor mount, and you can see that gap right there. That's how much the engine's sagging, about a half an inch or so. So I'm gonna jack it up and uh, make that touch again. Engine mount is back on, and you're gonna do the timing covers. Lower timing cover, upper left, and upper right timing cover is the order you do it in. 
You want to make sure all the cords are routed correctly on the timing covers as well. Anyone doing this van and uh, on the same day, I forgot this, but I had to I had to sag the engine to get this top alternator bolt out and I already put the mount, uh, engine mount back in so I was unable to get it, but I could there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here that holds this AC hose. Take that out and then lift this AC hose all the way up and then it lets you um, it lets you put in that bolt, it lets you reinstall that bolt right there. That was a big pain in the butt. Before I did the engine mount, I wish I would have done the alternator. Since, since yesterday, I forgot. Alternator is re-bolted. There's just two bolts, one at the top, one at that bracket down there. That one was kind of tricky. I just re-bolted that AC, I think it's called the AC manifold, uh, to the top of that new compressor. We're going to evacuate the system because that's going to take an hour or so while I install the upper timing covers and start putting the rest of the engine bay back together. So I'm gonna pull a vacuum on the AC while I do the rest of the stuff. Um, I do wanna loosen up the crank bolt. To do that, I just put that on it and then I uh, whack it counterclockwise and I got it loose so I can take that off and reinstall my harmonic balancer my pulleys and then start re reinstalling my pulleys and such got the rear timing cover back on one of the back bolts back there is kind of tricky there's a plate that overlaps it that goes on top of it and getting all that lined up was kind of tricky i needed the right extension for my socket and this bolt right here overlaps with this front timing cover so be aware of that as well don't put that bolt in um still pulling a vacuum on that and then everything else is kind of just cosmetics. The fans, these little bracket, these uh, little plastic pieces, the metal bracket in the front, the horns here and there. All right, we've been pulling a vacuum for like 30 minutes at 30 PSI negative. We tightened down the alternator. We installed back the AC compressor. Um, there is one little wire back here that you probably pulled out if you had jiggled around this wiring harness. And it's just like a nub wire. There's a little wire hanging above the, the uh, power steering drive. And that needs to be replaced. It's right here. I accidentally yanked it out. It just goes onto a little nub. It goes onto a little nub on top. I just put it in solely by feel without even looking. That's power steering fluid. Is that normal, car people? Reinstalling the power steering tensioner. I do not remembering it being this close to this. There's like no clearance, but I mean, I guess that's what it is. It's right next to the timing cover, it's crazy. Harmonic balancer is pretty easy to get back on. I'm just getting it in by hand. Didn't even have to get out a mallet or anything. That was really easy. And we'll get our uh, power steering belt on. And then we'll Reroute our, uh, our, we'll reroute our drive belt. We got a new, new power steering belt. And we're doing a new drive belt. Timing covers are on. Fans are on. There's still a couple of little cosmetic things, and then this front bar I got to put on. But I'm getting ready to start it and try to see if I could put any more coolant in it. Will it even start? Will she even start without exploding? Something's not plugged in. It's pretty important to uh, plug in your crank and your cam position sensor because that's why it didn't start. We got it. Blast the heat. It is so much quieter down there. All right, all you car people. This center cylinder right here, there's a knock coming from this assembly or maybe a vibration coming up through the spark plug. But when I press down on it, it goes away. When I let go. It kind of makes a knock. I don't know if that's a vibration.
Only when I press down on it. Not when I pull up or push, or if I push it to the side here. It quiets it down if I let go. I have no heat in the front of the car, but I do in the rear. The rear heat comes out pretty good down here. Coming out of here at 117, 118. It says it's coming out of here at 102, but it does not feel like 102. We pulled a vacuum on the compressor, now we're going to fill it with refrigerant. No more weird smells, only that weird noise that's right here. First can of our 134A going in. My AC compressor just kicked on. That's good. I'm doing this by myself. Uh, I got the AC on blast. Blast, blast, blast. Blast in the back. It's not cold yet. I gotta add three cans of this stuff and it's taking forever. By no means done, but done for today. The big win was the timing belt is done. Couple more things we gotta put back together. Clean up the garage. Still gotta work on the AC. I will hook up the pressure gauges one more time before I go to bed. This is what we're reading after three cans of refrigerant. Car is off. Low pressure is at 105. High pressure is at 100. Something is not right there. And once the air is on, we are at about 50 on the left and 250 on the right. Uh, it calls for two pounds, eight ounces for a maximum charge. I put three cans in it, three cans at 12 ounces each. So I put 36 ounces in it, which is two pounds. So maybe that's what I did wrong. I don't know. If I evacuated the system, got a negative 30 suction, a negative 30 vacuum. It held the vacuum for about an hour, so I know I don't have a leak. Uh, I might have blockage, or I might need to charge more refrigerant because manual says I need two pounds, eight ounces. I put three 12 ounce cans in, so I only put in 36 ounces, so I only put two pounds, so maybe another uh, three quarters of a can. I don't know. If you know anything about AC, and you want to know anything else about this system that I haven't already provided, I'd be more than happy to tell you, and maybe you can help me diagnose it, and then I can fix it. It would be much appreciated. But if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up. Get my van hands clean. I got blood all over my hands from these. But I definitely leveled up as a mechanic, to leveled up as a person. So if you have any encouraging comments, I'd love to hear them. Thumbs up for change timing belt. First time, took me a while. We had ups and downs, but it's been done. And I'll talk to you guys in the morning. Bye. Homeboy likes the Honda Helix. Oh my gosh, this thing is so big. My mom would freak out. Oh my gosh, that probably ain't scared of nobody.